Yeah. My hair? Yeah, I know. Um, I cut it myself. This is an at-home... Uh, this is an at-home lockdown pandemic sort of haircut. This is a year into the pandemic, and I've taken matters into my own hands. I always kind of mess with my hair a little bit on my own because there's certain ways I want it to be. Like, I always want the front to be a certain way, even if it's short or if it's long. There's, like, a specific way that I want it. And people that, like, cut my hair don't always understand what I mean. So I always kind of tweak it a little bit. I certainly wasn't intending on coming out with this kind of tribal mohawk thing you know it reminds me of uh there was sort of this like horse hair kind of main thing that was happening about 15 years ago in the gay community in toronto around pride and yeah all these like super hot guys had something like this but then the back was like long so it was like mullety but the back was like long so it was like mullety but it was also like um like the mane of a horse uh i think it was like a a whole vibe like it was something i wasn't a part of at the time i was um yeah i was not a part of that but i do remember seeing it and so this is like very whatever um perhaps if i was uh, i don't know what to say basically i'm doing my best with it this is the hair that i have right now and yeah Hopefully I'll be able to find a bucket hat and that will get me through my work days. It'll be on trend and it will also be giving me a little bit of privacy when I'm in public. That's the one thing that I always am craving <laughs> out in the world, which is probably why I am oddly comfortable sitting here talking to nobody doing this because um, yeah, when I'm like out in the world, I always want privacy. I, I want a, like a little bit of a separation from people. I want to be left alone, as they say. Anyhow, I'm going down a dark path. Like I said, we're over a year into the pandemic. We are coming out of the third wave. We are presently in lockdown. And yeah, it's... Um... You know what I thought? I thought that I would start showcasing my glasses collection. I collect glasses in the same way that I collect fragrances. These are my newest glasses. They're from a brand called Salima Optical, which is out of Paris. Of course, I live in Toronto and I get them at a place called Crystal Opticians. I am not sponsored by these people, although I would gladly be. I've been getting my glasses there for like 10 years. And the same way I kind of approach my fragrance buying and collecting i bring that uh very special kind of energy to purchasing glasses yeah they're from a, a spot here in toronto called crystal opticians when i first went there and this is truly why i love them and why i think it's worth talking about and sharing it with people when i first went there about nine years ago i was just newly off the street i had recently just gotten my first apartment and i was still like on government benefits i wasn't working i was like just weeks off like a 20 year crystal meth run. So <laughs> the thing is when you're on disability, the government gives you like a voucher to go get glasses. But the fact is that this voucher truly doesn't cover the cost of glasses. So it's kind of a humiliating experience and it's dehumanizing. So these wonderful people, it's a family business, they're sisters, and they were so warm, so welcoming. I didn't like at the time understand like how I had this thing to get glasses, but I couldn't really get glasses because it didn't really cover uh, what I needed it to cover. They were like, you're going to walk out of here with a pair of glasses. And they have all these vintage frames from, you know, the 70s, maybe even earlier, uh, because the place has been around for a while. So I really was able to have my pick. And it was just a very dignifying, validating experience at a time when, you know, I was... Uh, just very, very new to uh, a life that wasn't like intensely um, difficult. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you're tender, things are new, you need people to treat you with some kind of uh, conscientiousness and some, you know, concern about how their treatment of you could impact you. They were so wonderful. 
I left there with glasses that day. And because they treated me so well, like a person, even though obviously they made no money off me, I think it cost them money to like do these glasses or at the very least, you know, they lost money and like profit or whatever. I have always gone back there because that's meaningful. That means something. Customer service means something. Humanity means something. Oh, wow. Am I emotional today? Am I introspective and thoughtful? Maybe. Life has been pretty crazy lately. I'm. We're still in a lockdown here in Toronto, Canada. I'm still working at a site for COVID positive people who are homeless. And yeah, there's an opioid crisis. There is an overdose crisis. There are people all over the place just really struggling and suffering. And I guess I'm putting all of that um, energy into obsessive compulsively buying perfumes. So I haven't had Angel for a while and I thought, you know what? Oh, I haven't smelled that for a while. I need that back in my collection. That's kind of what happened to me here with all this. Basically, back on my bullshit with the travel sprays and I bought a travel spray of Angel which I hadn't smelt in a long time. Although the thing about Angel is you don't really need to smell it because you're kind of always smelling it. I think it's like one of the easiest fragrances to recall. So if you haven't smelt it in a while, don't worry. You can just kind of think of it and there it is. Yeah, I thought, oh, I want to get a little travel spray of Angel and see where we're at with the thing. And yeah, this one seems a little bit, um, lighter i think this is an eau de parfum but this seems a bit lighter than some of that like very dank um you know dark nutty chocolatey patchouli -y angel but yeah it, it does a job it's getting me there and i thought wow maybe i want like some more angel in my life and it just put me down this whole mugler kind of rabbit hole believe it or not i have never sniffed angel muse so i got an angel muse travel spray that one got on my hand and it's getting out of hand mm. yeah this is i probably couldn't have imagined this the way it is because it is really satisfying it's fruity there is more of a freshness to it. Uh, yeah. It's, I'm getting fruit, floral, um, but it's like, it's like kind of like in the mid, but the fruit is on the top and there seems to be like a floral in the mid. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, but this is definitely making you go, okay, yeah, this is connected to Angel in some way. Oh, wow, it's a total, like, it's a fresh take. It's a fresh take on Angel, and it's really good. I know everybody probably already has it, but if you don't have it, I say get it, man. I'm definitely going to wear this, and as soon as I put it on my skin, I thought, yeah. Full bottle worthy. Oh, I have one random thing that shouldn't really be a part of this, but you see these two travel sprays? You see what they look like? Okay, so... I have a celebrity fragrance collection. I'm not ready to like talk about it as like a thing because I'm still searching out like random celebrity fragrances. I There are a few that are really good, obviously, like any fragrance. Some are great. Some are like totally whack and don't get them. I did just get this and I felt like I had to include it in this even though it's not Mugler. Um, and there's a bit of Gautier coming up, but uh, just because, I mean, visually it kind of goes together. So this is Diana Ross's fragrance. I saw Diana Ross in concert, oh my god, was it 30 years ago? It was a really long time ago. If you're Canadian, whenever they had the referendum, the Quebec referendum, when they were voting whether or not Quebec would um, separate from Canada, um, it, it was on Halloween. I don't know the year, but whatever year that was, if you know, put it in the comments. Um, whatever year that was, that was the year on Halloween when they had the vote that I went to go see Diana Ross at the Pantages Theater in Toronto. It was so wonderful. I just went by myself. Anyways, this is her fragrance. I thought she came out with a fragrance a long, long time ago. I couldn't find anything about that. 
but I do have a memory of reading somewhere that like Diana Ross was one of the first people to have a celebrity fragrance. Um, but as far as I can see, this came out a couple years ago and that's it. Now, Sophia Loren did have a celebrity fragrance many years ago. I just really look for that. Yeah, I've been like looking for things all over the place. Like usually I get my fragrances from like a couple regular spots and that's just where I get the stuff I need. But I've been like on eBay and doing all this shit and really seeking out things. And I've been able to find like sellers with like really, really high level of positive reviews. Anyhow, this is called Diamond Diana. Oh yeah. I like it. I really do. Yeah, it's, um, you know what? It's just on this side of being mature, <laughs> but it's unexpected. It's unexpected because it's not your typical celebrity scent. It's not sweet. It's, I'd say it's green. It's also, there's like, to me, this, maybe it's bergamot or whatever. There's this like barbershop-ness about it. Yeah, this came out in 2017. This came out in 2017, which is, uh, it's kind of a strange time for Diana Ross to come out with a fragrance, but perhaps it coincided with her um, series of shows at the Wynn Casino in Vegas. I don't know just looked it up on Fragrantica and it does say that it's aromatic and green and I get that so it's like a feminine expression of like a masculine kind of DNA there's a soapiness to it you know I get lemon apricot yeah, it's so, it's like, it's really cool. I got it for a really great price and it's like, I'm excited to just have it in my little secret celebrity fragrance sort of stash. I wear these fragrances at home. I wear them out too, but I don't know. I just like to go through my celebrity fragrance collection when I'm just like chilling at home and really give it a good sort of wear and develop like my opinion on it. Ooh. Yeah, so Diamond Diana. I think it's worth getting if you can get it for a good price, which I'm sure you can. It's interesting. Um, yeah, if you're young, I don't know if you're going to be super obsessed with this, but I mean, she's probably a 70-year-old woman. And so if you were a 70-year-old woman, this would be pretty happening. And if you're a 44-year-old man, yeah, then your name is Richard, and uh, you wear this at home. <laughs> Diana. This is Angel Passion Star. I got it for, it's only 25 mil. Yeah, so basically what happened is I got those two Mugler uh, travel sprays, and then I just went in. Uh, I went in, and I bought a bunch of Mugler shit. So this is Passion Star. Yeah, it's like Angel, but what you get at the top, like for me, I thought I almost smelled like cinnamon in it, but um, it's like there's berries, there's cotton candy. I don't know if I'm getting a cotton candy vibe, maybe. Caramel. It just, now I don't know if this is because, well, it's a red package. I don't know if it's because it's called Passion Star, but I definitely got like a very like red like vibe yeah yeah yeah. you know what i just read a, a review on fragrantica that said this is blue angel dressed in red so it's not just me yeah just getting a red vibe from it what's cool about it is you know it's just a 25 mil i think this is the only size this uh flanker came in and yeah it's just nice to have I'm getting into collecting these Mugler things and I really like it. I'll definitely wear it. And I don't think, you know, having, you know, your typical angel uh, would cancel this one out for you. Oh, okay. This is refillable. Where do you find angel passion to refill it with? Wow, now wait a second. I don't know. I don't agree with this. What I'm reading, that this is exactly the same as the regular Angel, just a different packaging. Um, so that would explain why it's refillable. Um, but I don't think it smells the same. It doesn't smell the same to me. 
Well, here's an angel EDP. <laughs> no, I don't think they smell the same. There is a slight difference. I don't think they smell the same. But uh, you know what? What also drew me to this is I found all of these um, uh, Mugler fragrances that were before, you know, reformulation and before the whole um, buyout. So this is still Thierry Mugler. Ooh, happy to have it. You know, these fragrances do have a concentration of oil in them because as I'm spraying them, they're kind of getting on my table and it's shiny, y'all. Okay, let's do the last of the angels that I got this time around. I was so, so excited to find this. This is Angel Taste of Fragrance and it's complemented with the addition of bitter chocolate. I don't wanna like spray it everywhere and waste it. It's a small bottle. Oh my God, Woo. yeah, this is really good. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this has like a depth, obviously a chocolate depth to it. Um, that's really, really satisfying. It's very gorgeous. It's delicious. Um, for some reason, like, I don't know if I'd be into necessarily like a gourmand that smells like cake or something or, you know what I mean? Just something like that. I don't know. Like, I don't really have any fragrances that are cakey or like biscuits or whatever. There is something edible about this. Obviously it's chocolate, but it's deeper than that. Angel is kind of the original gourmand. If it wasn't, you know, don't quote me on it. Okay, so the next two, I got Aura EDT and EDP. Now, I must complain for a moment. Um, I bought this from a website. It's a rechargeable one. Rechargeable, like refillable. Yeah, it's doomed. So when I got it, you can see, it's like, the, you can see there's like, there's like fragrance in the lid, like it's leaked. Look at this. Oh, so if you're like me, yeah, that would really drive you fucking nuts. And it, and it did drive me nuts. Anyhow, so it's leaky. Um, it had leaked even before I got it. It's leaky. It had leaked even before I got it. Like I have only had this for a week. Um, peep uh, the fragrance. It was still, it was in a box. It was wrapped, it's got a batch code, it's got the circle code, it's got all that stuff. It's legit, it's just, I guess like broke, came apart in packaging. Like it didn't come apart like this, but um, when I unwrapped it, it was, you know, soiled inside, it was wet. Wet with fragrance. Anyhow, here's a crazy thing. So it made me wanna buy another bottle of it immediately right away because I just, a part of me can't deal with uh, this disappointment. And also just, oh my God, you know what? I love this scent. Yeah, this is like super fruity. It's green. The EDP has like this, um, like vanilla that is such, so powerful in it. And it's like, it's also like kind of like a sparkly bitchy kind of vanilla it's like deep but also like superficial but this doesn't have that part for me this has like the green vibes but like rhubarb the notes in this are so good when you read what the notes are pear hibiscus seed rhubarb mm, jasmine strawberry you get these things in it you really do it's a great fragrance it doesn't have like superb longevity or anything like that. It just doesn't. But you know what? Maybe this bottle has been exposed. Perhaps I can't judge the Aura EDT on this experience, uh, but off the top, yeah, the way it smells, it's right up my alley. It's something I definitely wear, will wear, would love to wear, and I wouldn't mind respraying it because it's just, there's something original about it. I like it. Yes, girl. Yes, girl. But why'd you have to come all fucked up, though? I'm not going to say the name of the place because whatever. I don't need to drag them. I let them know what happened. I made them aware of what they did. Yeah, but you know what? Something else I've been thinking about lately, and it's like, 
I must be getting tired. I must be needing a break from work, needing a break from sort of pandemia in general, a shorter fuse kind of vibe. There's like a shorter fuse kind of vibe happening with me right now. And it's like, yeah, I don't feel like saying uh, where I'm buying any of my fragrances. If you want to know and uh, you can just like reach out or you can message me on Instagram, which is um, on Instagram, you can search my name, which is Richard Keycott or R de Triomphe. So R D E T R I O M P H E. Um, yeah. And I'll tell you there if you DM me, not cause like, obviously like I'm not some, like I'm not bringing people, I'm not, I'm not bringing these places money. Obviously that's not how I mean it, but I also am like, yeah, whatever. I'm not doing free advertising for anybody either, except for all these fragrance houses. If you want me to talk about like your business on camera, I do think you're going to have to do something for it. Ooh, this one's saying she's salty. She needs a break. She needs a break. So let's spray this EDP. Oh, fuck. Yeah. So this, you get like the green fruit, uh, vivacious, bright, sprightly blast, but you get the vanilla with it, like, like in equal measures. It's really, really great. Uh, you know, this isn't new to a lot of people, um, but you kind of like with your mood glares, you're like, you're alien or you're angel, or maybe you're everything, but, uh, there's so many of each one that you kind of got to go through your flankers and have your whole sort of trip with it. Yeah, I love this. I'm so happy to have it. Um, I can definitely see myself using this up. This has better longevity for me than the EDT, which would make sense because it's an EDP. Um, yeah, it's amazing. It's gorgeous. It's really... Yeah, it's just like sweet and fun and unusual in a way that is not too challenging. So it's still you know, accessible, uh, if you're new. Okay, Lady Gaga, <laughs> this is the last Mugler, and it is Alien Man. Yeah, I, I had just smelled this, like, very casually uh, when I was in New York once, and I, I honestly don't remember it, and I didn't buy it that day. Um, and this was even before I smelled, like, actual, like, the Alien Alien. So yeah, I bought it. I found it for a good price in a gift set and I got it. Yeah, I'm happy to have this. Oh, interesting. That's so interesting. Today it's giving me like Eternity for Men vibes. Strange. And then it goes into another place. But yeah, the top is like, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I just want to see what these notesies are. What are these notesies? Oh, strange. Oh, wow. So the notes in here include like anise and dill. That's weird. Maybe that's what I'm smelling. That's giving me the eternity, uh, original like eternity for men vibes. It's also, it's also lavender, geranium, cashmere wood. You know what's interesting though is there's no jasmine in this. So isn't that kind of weird? that a fragrance whose entire DNA is based on like being a jasmine bomb has no jasmine in it. Yeah, I would have appreciated maybe, like I like this, I'll definitely wear it and it's nice, but um, like make an alien for men version that is popping off with jasmine. Last two. What a long video. <laughs> so yeah, I got Le Parfum from Gautier. And I finally got myself a bottle of Coco Rico by night. Coco Rico is definitely one of my signature scents. So I always wanted Coco Rico by night. I've seen it before on eBay, but whenever I found it on eBay, the sellers didn't ship to Canada. So yeah, I got this. Maybe we're going to wear it. Mmm. Mm. Yes. This is Coco Rico, but it's um, fruitier. I'm like totally obsessed with rhubarb. This has rhubarb 
So I guess that's like the fruitiness, cocoa pod, fig leaf, and the base notes are tonka and woody notes, it says. Yeah, so this definitely has a DNA of Coco Rico. I don't know why that makes it night. So I don't know what classifies a fragrance as night, you know what I mean? Because it's like a typical thing in fragrances, they always have a flanker called, not always, but it's pretty usual, uh, typical for a fragrance to make a flanker of a scent that is called night or, you know, intense, or absolute, or freeze. So I'm not sure what about this makes it night, but I definitely love it. The longevity on this is not like super happening, but yeah, it's just one of those personal things where it's like, I need to have it. I wanna show you something interesting about this though. So you see with Coco Rico, it's the face. And the other ones are this, the, um, the silhouette of the body. But I just got like an armoire for all my fragrances and I've been putting them away and putting them on risers and kind of like getting them organized. And look what I found out. I've had both, I've had Coco Rico for years, not this one, but the original. And I've had Gauthier for years, not this one, but the original. <laughs> uh, but look at this. Okay, can I show you? How can I show you? Here. So yes, this is a face. Yes, this is the body but I was putting them away like this. When you put the face to the side, it's the same silhouette as the body. Where can I put this where you can see that? Look, isn't that wild? Yeah, this is like a moment for me. Oh, now I'm thinking I should have made the parfum my fragrance of the day. So yeah, I, I actually uh, sniffed this before I bought it in like a drugstore or something when it came out. Yeah, I love it. You know, I've been wanting my Lamal to be more, like to have more depth. Obviously it's probably changed through the years. We formulated, what have you. So I don't get like what I used to get from Lamal, which was like a very enveloping, very sillage, very projection. Um, I don't get that from it anymore. Uh, but I feel like this has it. Now, I still have to do like a full wear on my skin, but I'm really, really pleased with this Frank. Franker? Really pleased with this Franker. I'm really, really pleased with this Franker. Flanker. Ultra Mild didn't work out for me, but you know what? I ended up keeping it, and I think we're going to come back to it and see how we do. But Le Mal Parfum, it's hot. Mmm. Yeah. Sexy. Okay, so that's it. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Oh, my earring fell out. Look how cute. It's a little zipper. Hello. Okay, that's it. That's all those fragrances. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Like this video. Don't like it. Let's get into a fight in the comments. <laughs> Uh, if you made it this far, really, especially today, um, basically, I love you. Um, you keep me hanging on. You are a real one. Thanks for watching.